Okay guys, Melissa and I have been doing a few videos together. We talk a lot about crooked nails and you guys were asking questions. So, what are you gonna do for us? I'm gonna make a crooked nail and make it straight. So I'll show you how I do it. Easy enough? So I built out two crooked nails. It's kind of hard to build out crooked nails. Usually you start with the straight nail and your client comes back like three weeks, four weeks later and it's really taking a turn either to the right or the left. So as you could see, they're both kind of leaning this way. This point needs to be a little more right here. This needs to come over this direction. So I'll show you from the top what I do from the beginning of the rebalance. I also made it look like it needed a rebalance. It looks kind of crazy back there, but it's like I said, hard to build a nail that's grown out and crooked. <laughs> so let's get started. Okay, so for the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push back my client's cuticles. It's gonna allow me to check out their nails, see if anything's lifting, are her nails crooked? Yes, these two are. So I'm assessing when I'm pushing back the cuticles. So from here, what I'm going to do is remove my color. Let's go into our safety bit, our core safety bit. So now I'm gonna turn it on about 12,000 RPMs. First, before I remove the color, I want you to look real closely and see what I'm gonna do. The side it's leaning on and the side it's heavier, I am going to take my drill bit and not put a lot of pressure, just slight pressure, and kind of bring it in to where I could visualize it being straight. It's gonna leave my nail like a little thinner, and my other side, you'll see really how crooked it is once I bring it in. But then once I build the nail, I'll build up the other side. So let's get started. You're gonna look straight at the nail. And about zone two, you're gonna come up and down, up. I'm gonna turn it around. Okay, so as you can see, I brought it up through here with zone two. You could see how this is more straight now. I obviously need to put my point a little bit over and build up my side, but I like to build up, I like to file on the side that's the heaviest, so it kind of gives me a guide of where I need to add. So let's do the square nail now. So again, on the side, my left side is where it's heavy. I am going to start about zone two, come up to like my sidewall and come down. Kind of file my side. Okay, so let's take a look at these before I remove her color. So as you could see, I brought in my sides, my heavy sides, and when I remove my color and start building, I'll build more on this side. So once you electric file all the crooked nails and take the side that's, that it's heavier on, you're going to start removing color from there. So, doing baby circles all the way through it. And taking off red's probably one of the hardest colors to take off, so is black. You're gonna be taking off a lot of this color this season. So I get off as much as I can right here. It's okay if a little bit's left on. I'll get it with my next drill bit. Let me make sure she's in enough. She is. A good thing our clients nail stay in. Okay, let's say our client wants her nails shortened some, okay? So at this point's where I'll shorten them. So what I do is I look straight down on the nail, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use about zone two with my drill bit, and I am going to kind of take it down in the middle and bring it to the side. Take it down in the middle, bring it to the side. And usually they want them shortened about as much as they grew, or I'll ask them, how much do you want them shortened? So their nails have grown from here to here, that means you take off that much from the free edge. Um, sometimes they say half of it. That means just half of what's grown out. So let's do hers half. Okay, so I did that all with zone two of my, of my drill bit. This one too, she wants them um, about half of what they grew out. So I'm gonna use zone two and just kind of glide it over. 
and they're both a little bit shorter now. Okay, so now I'm going to go into my arbor band and it's a medium grid arbor, arbor band. Now I'm going to do baby circles around the cuticle, meaning I'm never keeping it down and dragging it through. I'm kind of going up and lifting up, going up and lifting up. You can't see that moving. It kind of looks like I'm on the nail constantly, but literally what I'm doing is contact up, contact up, contact up, contact up. And I do that around the cuticle area and I do it a little slower because around the cuticle area, you kind of need to be precise. So I do that to the whole natural nail. Once I've prepped my natural nail, then I tickle through the rest of my nail. This will remove my remainder of my red. And I have some here on the corner. Remove all that red. So it's easier to remove the remainder of the color. Let me kind of tighten it up a little more here with the Arbor Band. So baby circles around the cuticle area, making sure you prep her natural nail well. And again, I'm at 5,000 RPMs for prepping. So from here, I'm going to tickle off the rest and prep all the way down to take off all her remainder of her color. This is a cool thing to see. It's hard to get this color right here on the side because sometimes when you come in, you notch it out if you take it from this direction, you kind of could see it through here and come up. You're not going to notch it out and you could see it all come away. Let's see. I totally didn't take off any with my safety, but I usually come in with my, with my arbor band to do it there. Okay, so now that I have everything removed, let me dust off her hand. Sometimes you might see a little bit of red left. What if she's gonna wear a nude? I'll just take my 150 if I put my, my electric file away already and take off those spots. It's not a big deal, it takes no time to do it. If they're going to a dark color or a color, the same color or a color that will cover it, a little bit's not a big deal because you could take it off the next time. So I don't know what color she wants to wear yet, so I'm gonna take it all off. Okay, now I'm gonna go into swipe to change my pH balance. If you noticed, I dusted the nail first. The reason why I dust the nail first is I wanna remove all my dust off her fingers. So then when I use swipe, it's actually cleansing the nail. And I know there's no particles left behind. Okay, so what I did is I did one gel and one acrylic so I could show you in both. And that way you could see how you work with both, both products. I have one client where it's even more crooked than this and um, I have to put real the form out. So bring a form out sometimes. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and bring a form out because that's probably the easiest way to get used to doing it. So what I'll do now it's interesting because my form isn't going to be put on straight. It's going to be put on a little crooked and I'll explain. So my focus is on this side. I don't need it to meet anything on this side at all. What I need to build is the opposite side. So I'm gonna put my form on and kind of tweak it to the side. So if you look at it from the side, it's touching the whole nail. I don't wanna put it straight because if I put it more straight, it's gonna go up under the nail. Okay, so I usually kind of put my form on a little to the side. So see how it's a little crooked? I like it to be tight on the side I need to extend. So I'm gonna do the gel one first. I'm going to protein bond the natural nail and bring it all the way through. I'll go ahead and do the acrylic nail as well. Okay, go through all 10. After you go through all 10, that gives it enough time to kind of get tacky and then you'll repeat your process. When I'm using my gel, I always start with my base, right? That's your foundation. I get the question a lot. Do you have to use base? I would never not use base. Base is your foundation. It's what's gonna anchor, all your products gonna anchor onto it and it's gonna weave into your natural nail so it'll hold on really well. So it's a quick step. I usually put the bulk of it here and then go to my cuticle area. If I start, I personally, if I start at the cuticle area, I tend to flood my cuticle so it's faster for me to start here and work my way up. Okay, so now I'll cure this for 
at least 30 seconds. I would go through all five nails and then she'd go under the light and I would um, be applying on my other hand. So 30 seconds. Okay, so now I'm gonna use my concealer peach because that's what I built her nail with. I usually fix her side first. So I'm gonna come right here, get the product kind of in front of my brush and then slowly drag it down. Okay, a little bit more here at her side wall, just a tad bit more. Overextend it. I'm gonna overextend it a little more and bring it in. I'm gonna do a little bit more here just to be safe. I find when I fix a crooked nail, it, you use more product there than you think you need to. There we go. See how I filled it in now? So now I'm gonna flash set this for 30 seconds. I'm gonna turn on the light before because I'm gonna hold it for Sally right now. It, I keep calling her Sally, I just named her. That's what I've always called her. But um, when you're practicing like this, um, I usually bring the light to her. It's just easier for me to the training hand. My client obviously is gonna go under the light fine. Sometimes your clients will go, this is a huge tip. Your clients will go in and say, this is the bottom of the light and they put their finger down hard and the form kind of pops up, it's gonna not cure right. So I usually tell my clients, if this is the part of the light, I have them float in the middle, not don't go down on the bottom of it. Float in the middle just for this flash set. Now I'll take off my form. Okay, now I'm going to rebalance her nail. So I'd get enough product where I could fill in her cuticle area. Kind of drag it through. Now, the look of your nail when you fix it is going to look kind of funky, kind of thick. And the reason why is you just brought a lot of product to the other side. I'm going to show you how to electric file it to where it looks real nice again. Now I'm going to final cure this for 60 seconds. If you're doing your full set, you obviously should flash set. You could do usually two or three nails, depending on if it's moving or not. Then um, final cure when you're done filling them all or rebalancing them, it's a final one minute cure with gel. So now I'm going to do the same to my acrylic nail, but I'm gonna use my cover pink, but I'm gonna kind of do the same thing with the form. Get the form on, make sure your side's all touching. Again. So really here's where it needs to touch the most. I'm gonna start here and bring some of my bulk over to the side, okay? So let's fill in our cuticle first. I'm gonna anchor her down. Start right at the cuticle. Let it flow this way a little. Then I'm going to wipe it till it overextends on this side. Then I'm gonna mold it down. See how I'm molding it down now with the side of my brush? So I brought all that extra product over to the side. Now I still have plenty of time. I'm kind of waiting a little bit because I want the product to kind of set up a little so I could start molding it a little more. I'm gonna add a little bit more, draw out some monomer, place it right here, blend it in, there we go. So once it starts to dry, I'm able to mold it how I want to. All this product right here is all new. That was the side that was the negative space. It was leaning to my right side. A lot of times before I taught myself how to do this or played with it, I would cut off their nail and reform it. Sometimes it's easier to cut off the nail. On my client that I totally, that she, her nail, really does kind of twist and turns to a side really severe like within two weeks her nails grow really fast i feel like every other time i cut it off i could fix it when she comes in three weeks and six weeks i usually cut it off and reform it it's faster for me the way her nail grows so she's more severe of her nail actually goes grows to the side and then grows down to the side so i make it look straight <laughs> 
Okay, so let's let that dry. Okay, so my gel one, I'm gonna wipe off my sticky layer with swipe. I find acrylic nails are, it's a mold, so it always comes out prettier with the application than a gel, of course, as you could see. But gel's easier to file. So they both have their pros and cons. So I'm gonna take my X-Cut. I like to work with my X-Cut for this. So I'm gonna show you some little tricks I do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is look, look um, on top of her nail. And I kind of added a lot on the side I needed to add. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I did when I first was bringing the side in, okay? So I'm gonna bring it in just a little here. Come right here so when it looks more straight. Okay, so I get them kind of straight. I come in my side here, straighten it. I'm not putting any pressure. All I'm doing is making contact, moving my drill bit and letting my drill bit do the work. Now on this side, let me show you right here. See all this hanging over? I'm gonna do the same thing I did on this side over here. So I'm going to use like zone one of my drill bit, come in my side, slowly bring it in. Okay, so then what I do is I bring the fingernail upside down. Let me dust this out so you can see it. I forgot to turn on my dust extractor. So right here, you could see how, you could see where I added, it's kind of uneven. I still have red from her last color right there. So what I'm gonna do, if you look real close, I am going to set my drill bit down, kind of move it front to back, get back as far as I can in the middle. See how I'm starting to clean it up and straighten it up? So what I'm creating is that even curve underneath. Okay, when I go on the sides, I don't want you to come straight at it because you'll notch it out right here. It comes as a curve, so you have to go in sideways with it. If you're afraid of getting close, it's fine. I'm gonna show you another drill bit. You could get a little closer. And with this plastic hand, I actually can't get as close as I can on a person because I could pull back our skin on a person. You can't on this training hand. So I'm gonna get really close at an angle. And I'm gonna kinda, I touch it and kinda bring it up. Touch it, bring it up, touch it, bring it up. So I got as close as I can. I'm gonna do the same to this side. Touch it, bring it up, touch it, bring it up. Okay, kind of make sure everything's clean under here. Okay, so let me show you what drill bit to switch to. This is our pointy under the carriage nail cleaner. So I'll come in right here. Same thing, I even come at an angle here. See how I'm not straight when I'm right here? I'm straight in the middle and as I go, I slowly angle my drill bit because you will drill into your side. Most of you probably know what I'm talking about because we've all done it and done that before. This is a really cool drill bit because it really gets in tight in those areas, especially when you put a new set and the nail's growing out, you might have a little lip there. It really gets it good. So now look at how clean underneath this nail is. You don't feel any ledge, nothing. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my X-Cut. I was just waiting for acrylic to finish drying. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna set it in the middle, kind of go front to back. And drill out her nail a little. Come up the side. It's a little wet, but not much. I find square is really easy to clean underneath as opposed to a stiletto or a almond nail because it kind of goes into a tight. This, your barrel kind of fits really nice in there. So I'll go back into the undercarriage bit and I'm on 12,000 RPMs, okay? Because you don't want to put pressure. If you go too slow, you're going to feel the need to put more pressure. Let the drill bit do the work for you. Just make contact and let it do the work for you. Okay, so now I'm going to flip her over, go back to my X cut. At this point, if you want to go to your safety bit because you feel more comfortable with it, that's fine too. I'm going to work with my X cut. I'll look at it from the side, blend everything in. So I'm starting in zone one. Go around the cuticle area. I like to skip to zone three and then work myself up to zone two and you start seeing your arch come in. So 
So what I'm doing right now is making sure I have enough on my stress point, which is through here to your apex. It also, it makes the nail look really nice. It has that nice sleek shape. Okay, from here, I'm gonna look down the barrel, kind of bring everything in. Kind of bring this in a little more. So as you can see when I work, I do a lot with my drill bit. I don't hand file a lot. If you hand file, that's fine. I just prefer to do most of it with my electric file because it makes me get done with my service faster and it saves my hand in the long run. I've done nails kind of a lot of years, so I don't think I'd be doing nails now if I hand filed a lot. I'd probably need surgery or I've had surgery and struggle with it. So there's a reason why we have this. So as you can see, I pretty much got it straight again. Now let's go to the acrylic nail. Same thing. Start right here, maybe go around the cuticle, blend everything in with zone one. Now with zone two, one and two, going to two. Once I hit two, I like to come to three and come up. You could continue through, but the reason why I like to do that, you could see your arch come in already. It helps me visualize it. If I go through right here, I would have took too much off there, possibly. Okay, once I do that, I'm gonna start bringing in my sides. This side, I'm gonna bring in a little more. You'll find the side you added on, sometimes there's a little bit more than you need. Not a big deal, it's always easy to bring it in, but it's not easy to add back again. So I rather overcompensate a little and fix it from there. I kind of come underneath the nail a little, so make sure it's all even. So now I'm gonna sneak peek it. That means I'm gonna turn it client view like this to make sure that I'm get, keeping it straight. So I could see they're pretty straight. I may come in a little more here, bring it in a little more there, but I'm pretty much straight again, okay? So I, what I do is I peek at it to see if I really need to bring it in again from their view. Because you find when you electric file yourself, they look straight to you, but I always peek this way to make sure they're straight. Okay, so they look pretty straight to me. What I'm gonna do from here is just take in that side I saw. Bring it in a little more sleek here. It's a little thick to me. Let's make sure this one is, let me sleek this one a little more too. Okay, so now I'm gonna go into my medium arbor band and I'm gonna use it about 9,000 RPMs on my gel mill. So what this does is I'm reshaping it again so it's gonna save me from hand filing so much. So it, what I like about doing this is it takes off just enough that it starts making it look really perfect. Now, with the acrylic nail, the medium one's not gonna work as well as it does on the gel. You could always um, switch to a coarse if you want, but it will take off enough to kind of fine tune it for me. So it's basically a 150 grit, and a 150 grit is what we finish our nail with before we gel polish the nail, right? Or put something on top of it. The only time we leave a slick nail or buffet is with polish, regular polish, okay? So now, go ahead and come in here and just finish tightening up my shape. Look down the barrel of the nail. And I always look down the barrel of the nail to make sure it's tight on all sides. I always measure my sides and make sure my file is touching on all corners. Let's soften her shape a little. Okay, now this one, make sure her sidewalls are all straight. She switched a little more to a little bit more of a taper square. Not quite coughing all the way, just a little taper. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is client profile again. They are straight, so now I'm just gonna tighten them up a little more. Just a little fine tuning. This is what makes the nails perfect pretty much when you finish it off on this view. 
Now this, my clients, when they first come to me are like, no one's ever filed my CAD from this direction. Well, when a client looks at their nails from this direction, they could tell if it's crooked or not. When we look at it from ours, it looks straight to us the way we hold it. You'll always see where the nail is leaning from this view. Look down the barrel and we are done. So I'll give you a close look at this. Go into swipe. Remember to swipe towards you to remove all the dust and debris from the sidewalls in the cuticle area. So now when you look at them, see how they're totally straight? Okay, so that's the way you could do it without cutting it off. It's actually fast when you're not explaining it. It's kind of you get in the routine of it and it's something we have to do on eight out of 10 of our clients. I think most of us are born with straighter nails and then eventually they just start to turn. I don't know, but it's valuable to know this trick because it's very common. Thank you so much for watching our nail videos. To watch more, head right over here. And to subscribe to our channel, click right over here.